good people of Open Art. Today we're going to take a look at camera angle controls. And I often get questions about how do you change the perspective of my image? This tool is going to help with that. Let's jump right in and get started. On the very left, you want to click on image. You'll get the sub menu here and we'll see camera angle control or you can click it right here. We're going to collapse the side menu. And it's a pretty simple interface to work with. On the top, you have two models, ultra and fast. Ultra is going to give you the best quality. Fast is obviously a bit quicker if you want to test, you know, some quick iterations and different camera angles. We're going to leave it on ultra. Just below is where we can upload the image we want to start with. If you click on here, you can upload it or drag and drop or take something from your generation history. I'm going to drag and drop my image here and I'm going to start with a front facing image just so I can explain this properly to you. First, let's take a look at the camera movements. Forward is front facing. For example, this is the original image that I generated. You see it's on a slight angle. When I select forward, it's going to generate a front view perspective. So let's do some real time examples. We're going to select backward and leave everything else at default and click on create. You'll see we have a preview window here and the generated images will be below in a thumbnail style. You can only generate one at a time, but it doesn't take very long, just a few seconds. And here's the generated image for backward. So forward means front, backward means back. I may actually talk to the team about changing the wording for this. That being said, if we select up, let's go generate that. And we see we have a top view perspective with the camera angle being a much higher. You'll notice down here, camera type, top down, very similar angles, okay? But we'll take a look at that later. Now, if we select down and generate the image, this is what we're going to get. You see that it's on a lower angle below the eyes looking up in a sense, right? Let's generate both the left and right. Here's the left camera angle and the right camera angle. For custom, you can type in manually a custom camera movement. I haven't tested this thoroughly, but if you put something like ultra wide angle, and I generate the image, you are going to get a bit of a wider perspective. Here is the original image, and I want you to take a look at this shoulder here. You see there's a little bit of cloud peeking through. And by manually prompting ultra wide angle, you see we have more of the cloud showing there. So it gives you a little bit of a wider angle. It's not drastic, but it definitely works. I'm going to switch this back to forward just to leave the front perspective. And then we're going to go down to camera type. We're going to select top down and generate this image. And you see with this perspective, it's very similar when we just use the up camera movement. Now we could make it more drastic by selecting wide angle and up. And now we see the field of view is much wider using this combination. So you can have many variations by combining the two options here. Obviously, wide angle is just that. So for example, if you had a close up and you select wide angle, you're going to get a wide angle view. Let's do close up and bring this back to forward, generate that image. And voila, a close up shot of our main image. The camera type also has a custom mode. Once again, I haven't really tested this out, but if I do something like fisheye lens, we'll get that sort of barrel distortion that comes with the fisheye lens. If you look at the horizon, it's got a bit of a curve. And then we have like a heavy vignetting here that typically happens with those kinds of lenses. If you experiment with the custom modes, let me know in the comments below what has worked for you. I'm actually very curious. Now let's talk about rotation. I'm going to leave this on forward to keep it on the front view and we're going to use a wide angle. And the way this works is you need to think clockwise and counterclockwise. If I bring this up to let's say 45 degrees, let's hit create. This is 45 degrees clockwise. Okay. So on the right is clockwise. And if we go minus 45, and click on create. 
As a result, we see a counterclockwise movement of minus 45 degrees. One last thing on the rotation slider, you can go in increments of 15 degrees. So you see 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, and 90, and the same going the other way. So you can imagine you can have multiple combinations of this. This one I did 45 degree angle down and close up and we get this nice angled perspective with the camera close to the ground looking up. And by the way, it does save all the images in your assets folder here. Or if you're on the create page, you can see all my generations that I just showed you here. And this works for anything, a character, a person, a room. You see here, I've got a living room that I generated for the last video I did. I'm going to show you a few examples, but you see here that I've changed the angle to be a bit more front view. It's a bit tilted, which I could fix, but you get my point. I don't remember the exact settings I use for these. I'll show them on the screen, but you see we have a different perspective on the other side. And this one actually created a door on the side of the wall. The last image, there was a bookshelf here on the right. So we're looking towards the corner of the room from that perspective. And here's a top view perspective. We've got a close up view here. One thing I did want to point out though is that when you change the angle of the image to a perspective that isn't seen in the original, it's going to have to create something on that given perspective. For example, there's this big tall door here that we didn't see in the original. Here's the original image and we were just looking at this side here in the previous image. So it had to create something there. Theoretically, you can keep consistency to anything that is seen in the original image. Otherwise, the model's just going to hallucinate something that may or may not fit in the image. A good example of that is I started with this image, so you don't see the bottom like her pants or anything. When I did a wide angle shot, you see that, yeah, it gave her great hands, but it gave her some kind of funky shorts with these kind of stylish leggings, which actually works in this case. But you'll notice on a different angle, a bit closer up, the leggings look a bit slightly different. They're more of a fishnet style here, right? If you want to keep the consistency of your character, you're probably best to start off with a full body image so that when you change the angles, things like her outfit will remain consistent. This opens up so many new doors, especially if you want to animate these images with video. As you can see in this example, I took some of those images that I just created and put them in Cling 2.1. You start an end frame to get this orbit-like camera scene. That, my friends, is camera angle controls on open art. And by the way, if you're looking to create motion with your own videos, make sure to check out this video on open art motion sync. Until the next video, my friends, happy creating.